football. So it's a 15-yard penalty. And first and 10 out at the 45-yard line. Boy, you've got to feel good for Mike Price and these Cougars, don't you? What a season they've had. Trying to close it out here in Seattle. Michael Black can only keep it on the ground. Yeah, back to the line of scrimmage, that's it. Washington going after the football right now. Well, ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? The Home Depot, America's home improvement coach. Dean Witter, there are many ways to measure success. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. And Microsoft, where do you want to go today? Second and 10. Ryan Leaf directing traffic. And they give it to Michael Black. He's tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Eight twenty and counting left in this one here in Seattle. Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt, and Lewis Johnson. Thirty-eight to twenty-eight. The Cougars up on Washington, trying to go to the Rose Bowl for the first time in sixty-seven years. Mike Price and his team came in nine and one. Washington came in seven and three. And this man has had a huge day. Ryan Leaf. Third and ten. Four receivers set, Leaf to throw, has time, got a man, it's Jackson at the 40, and they'll move the chains. His favorite target all afternoon. What a game Jackson has had, too, with the two long touchdown receptions. He's got seven catches today. Watch this, again, he's working on Miller, gets the inside leverage, and Ryan Leaf, like he's done all day, put it right on the spot where he had to do to get the completion, where only his guy could get it. You know, Brock Hewitt of Washington came into this game and he ends up throwing four interceptions. They turn all those into points. Washington's won six of the last eight games against Washington State, and they felt confident in this one. But Ryan Leaf's just been too much. 345 yards in the air. Leaf with a roll caught in the backfield and dumped. Jeremiah Farms got there and brought him down. So a loss on the play. 7-11 in county. Jeremiah Farms getting a lot of playing time today. What they're trying to do is they come with five, six defensive backs. They're nickel and dime packages. Now, if you look at the top of your screen, he's just locked on Leaf the whole time. He's the nickel linebacker that they brought into this just because of Leaf's ability. He's kind of shadowing him like a spy, got up and made the tackle. And what Washington State's really been able to do today is spread the field and then run it with Michael Black, or Leaf takes his pick. He's got the fab five to go to. They spread it, they give it to Black. And he falls down. He slipped at the 40. Trying to cut back. Nigel Burton was right in front of him. Seen several guys slip here this afternoon, yeah. including Ryan Leaf. And part of that is because we had a light rain earlier before the game. There's a light rain falling now, and the turf is a little bit slick. There's a shock. It's raining in Seattle. But actually, they expected showers all afternoon. But just a mist. And it's been comfortable. Gotta really be excited for Mike Price. I keep saying that, but I mean, he's worked so hard. He's been through the tough times. Now he's got the good times, and he's gonna be rewarded. 11 out of 16 on the day. Third downs, it's third and 11. They've had third and long all afternoon. Leaf throws on the run, guess what? It's complete, and there's another first down. Chris Jackson on the catch. Again, Washington went to a passive defense. They were bringing guys, but they were covering in zone. Now watch, it looks like a man coverage, right? But now look how soft he gets. He doesn't follow him across the middle. He's waiting for help. And there's you got Jensen, number 40, coming into the picture of the linebacker. But again, they find that open area. They make it look like a man. They drop back to his zone, and Leaf's not fooled. And he puts it where only his guy can get it. This Washington defense been based on pressure all year. But Mike Price's offense picking that up now. They're really not coming after Ryan Leaf. And a gunshot. Michael Black cuts back, has room brought down by Farms. But he's inside the 20, down to the 17. May have another first down. And how impressive has this drive been? 
Well, and again, it's been Ryan Leaf that's been leading the way. I mean, he's got him so off balance, he spreads the entire offense, and when you spread the defense that thin, he's able to pass, he's able to rush. And look at this, new Pac-10 record. 3,647 yards for the season. Incredible. It's almost a typo when you look at that. Over 3,600 yards. Well, when you came and when he came into the game, he had 6,578 career yards, and uh, I mean, it's just incredible to me. See if I can do the math. 358 on the day. Going to give it to Black. Jensen got a hold of him right away. Jensen's had a great year and a big game today, along with Lester Towns, the inside linebacker for the Huskies. But time running out now. Jason Chorak, the All-American, down injured on the play. Look at Mike Price in his ninth year in Washington State. You know, his overall record coming into this, four games over 500, but right now he's on the threshold of the biggest achievement of his entire coaching career. He looks calm, but I guarantee you his insides right now are ready to explode. And a favorite son in Pullman. Played in the mid-60s for Washington State, was an assistant there, the head coach at Weaver State, and then... Back to Washington State, 1931. That's right. Washington. Timeout, Washington, number one. And they're trying to get back. They're very close to that right now. On the verge of returning to Pasadena for the first time in 67 years. Take a break. Point lead for Washington State. Are there Crimson Roses? There must be. The Cougars on the verge of doing something that their program has not done since 1931 and I think you make a good point Mike Price you look at him and the players there's a lot of poise there but on the inside there's got to be a lot of excitement yeah and he had that feeling all week you know he tried to play it down and just say we're going through a regular work week guys have never been looser we're having fun at practice but you know they were churning inside they really wanted this and they were tight when this game began Maybe the pressure even bigger because they're playing Washington. They're playing their in-state rival in Appleton. Michael Black tripped up by Jensen after a short game. Well, you look at what Washington's going to do now, Timmy. They had hoped perhaps to go to the Cotton Bowl with a win today. And a loss, obviously, by either of these teams really drops that team quite a bit in terms of the, uh, of the bowl picture. Yeah, and before this guy right here, Rashawn Shahi, got hurt. I mean, they were really in control of this thing. Mm -hmm. Then they lost two straight. This will make third, three straight. They haven't done that since the 1980s. This is a solid program, though. I mean, Washington overcame a crippling two-year probation, the loss of 20 scholarships, and the resignation of Don James. The worst record they've had is 7-4. and four. Lam Rice done a heck of a job here holding this together. Done a great job. And this senior class stuck with them, too. And a throw behind Jackson. Looked like he made the catch, but it's incomplete. Kind of trapped it. But with all the good things that we can say about Washington, there's not enough to say about Mike Price and Washington State. What they've done this year is phenomenal. Well, they've always viewed themselves as the program that gets the kids that aren't recruited by everybody else, the undersized kids, the underdogs. And Mike Price likes those kind of guys, and I think he uses that, too, to motivate. This year, ironically, coming into this game, all the attention was on them and their great season, the dream that was still alive, trying to go to the Rose Bowl. But they were the underdogs in this game. Lindell's field goal. 29 yards and good. May have been tipped, actually, but it went through. That's the exclamation point. And how fitting on this day when the ball may have been even tipped, it still gets through, and the field goal is good. The trip to Pasadena may be cloaked here in Seattle. The sideline for Washington State, the realization that they may indeed be going to Pasadena, beginning to set in, but Mike Price not about to close out this game yet. There's still over four minutes left. He's still hiding his emotions, isn't he? He's got that poker face. You can't tell how excited he is. <laughs> that little sigh. He's there, releasing though. a little bit of pressure, though. Now, you imagine coming into this one, knowing that Washington would like to beat you and keep you out of the Rose Bowl more than anything. As an in-state rival. Jerome looking for Rome, not going to get anywhere. Stopped at the seven, probably shouldn't have brought that out. Well, America's biggest road show rolls at least Lansing next week at 1 o'clock Eastern.
regional action. Penn State, number six in the country, taking on the Spartans or Georgia. And Georgia Tech, good rivalry there in Atlanta. Then at 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific on ABC Sports. Always a popular show, the Skins game. You see Tiger Woods, Tom Lehman, Marco Mira, and Freddie Couples, the defending champion. Big money riding at every hole. Next Saturday, right here on ABC. They may be wet, they may be cold, but they're happy. Washington State fans here. Flag on the play intended for Andre Desassure, the junior out of Woodland Hills, California. I think they're going to call pass interference on Ray Jackson. Jackson's played great defense on that corner all afternoon. They were trying to bracket him this time, and he got a hip into him. Contact was made about the 31-yard line. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. I mean, you watch this team today, and we've been around the country. How good do you think Washington State is? Well, they look pretty talented. There's no question offensively they're going to put points on the board. Defensively, they still give up a lot of points. I mean, 28 again here today, and the Huskies didn't play that, that well offensively. I mean, they turned it over four times and still have 28 on the board. So they're going to have their hands full with Michigan. There's no question about it. Well, what the defense has been able to do for Mike Price throughout the years, yeah, they've given up a lot of yards. But they've made big plays at key moments, not just big plays throughout games, interceptions, turnovers, whatever, but at the most opportune moments. And today, no different, too, the interceptions. Washington State today, 16 penalties mm. for 148 yards. You do that against Michigan, you can't win. Will the timer please set the clock at 3.55? The clock should not have started. It was an incomplete pass. 3.55. Hey, John Saunders, what about the Gators and the Seminoles right now? Hey, John, you know, actually, Timmy and I talked about it before this game. We weren't really sure how good Florida State was. They hadn't really been tested. North Carolina game, but that was about it. You go back to the USC game, the first game of the year. And over the long haul, USC proved itself not to be as strong as they have been in years past. So, you know, there was still that question mark hanging over the heads of the Seminoles. Look at the Pac-10 bowl picture and the choices. The Rose Bowl, obviously, first, then Cotton or Holiday and Sun, and then the Deep Eagle Aloha. But they're, they're choices, remember that. They're not necessarily places, as you've come to learn over the last couple of years. Here goes Fred Coleman, bouncing it outside. Still up, down the north sideline. Finally to run out of bounds inside the 40. Coleman's had a big day. Still 3.43 to play in the game, and Washington obviously has not thrown the towel in yet. Still trying to get back in this thing. And everybody's handing the Rose Bowl to Washington State, but oh no. the Huskies still playing hard. Especially at home here. 37 yards on that pass from Hewitt out to Coleman. Jim Lambright certainly hasn't given up. And not many have left, even though it's raining a little harder now here at Husky Stadium. Washington needs two touchdowns, and they've got to do it in 343, which means Hewitt's got to get hot in a hurry. A couple of timeouts for me. Hewitt looking over the middle, hit as he throws. Peyton out there. Kicked off. Intercepted at the 10-yard line. And for the second time today, a ball that hit Jerome Peyton in the hands, a little bit high, but it did hit him. Tipped up and then picked off. Both would have been great catches. Yep. Both times he was picked off, they would have been great catches. This time, the ball has a little bit taken off of it by the hit. But you look at this. Payton goes as high as he possibly can. And then Thompson, who had two interceptions last week, gets two here today. He just tipped it out with his right hand, tipped it to himself, and brought it down. And that's the third one right there. So he's got five in the last two weeks. Yeah, that's actually his third. Five in two weeks for a freshman. Filling in for Everett, who's been out with the injury. And one of the question marks in the secondary. Boy, how about that pick? He tipped it out of his hands with the right, and then fell and caught it as he fell to the ground. So 3.34 left as Washington State keeps it on the ground. 
And remember, if time permits, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental post-game report that scores and highlights from across the country. Timeout, Washington, number two. So Washington takes their second timeout. They've got one remaining. 321 left for Washington State to try to complete a little bit of history here. Step away. My name is Anda Andre, Director of Design for Ian Schrager. Calm, calculated, confident. The approach by Mike Price is all stored up. He hasn't shown any emotion. You just wonder what it's going to look like when he actually celebrates this thing. Well, when you think this is the 90th meeting in this series, dating back to 1900, this game is huge. Mike Price gets the win of his career. Michael Black with a hole over the right side, up to the 25-yard line, 315 in county. And we talked to Ryan Leaf about this team and his thoughts about it, and we asked him about his thoughts on it, when he thought this was really going to be a special team, and if he did early on. Yeah, yeah, we did. We really thought this was something special, you know. We knew we had a team that could be, you know, 10-0, 11-0, um, team going to the Rose Bowl, you know. That, that remained to be seen, though. We hadn't done anything yet. You know, we had talked it. And uh, you got to talk it first, and then you got to walk it, and that's what we've done this season. They're walking now. They're walking tall and proud. A lot of these fans would walk to Pasadena. It's been a long wait. 2.52. Black straight ahead, going to keep it down on the ground. Two hands around it. And Washington, what do they have? The one timeout left, that's it. And they take that now. Timeout, Washington. It's the last timeout. So that's their last timeout. Now all Washington State has to do is get a first down, and this is over. The Washington State fans, and there are a lot of them in this area, probably more here than across the mountain range over in the Pullman area. They're in the end zone. They're wet, they're cold, but they're singing and dancing. Yep, Pasadena bound. What an explosive team this is, though. I mean, offensively, it's almost as if they score at will. Every time Washington would threat, they'd come back, Washington State would answer. And it's a record-setting offense. I mean, these guys, look at this, just continue to add up yards. 5,522 total yards this year, which is a new Pac-10 record. And I mean, it's phenomenal. They have 518 yards today. Came in as the number two offense in the country right behind Nebraska, over 500 yards, just over 500 per game. And you mentioned the 518 today. All those numbers right now, though, to Mike Price, guess what? They mean zots. They mean nothing. And the feeling he must have to come back to his alma mater and take them to a Rose Bowl after all these years. This is a guy that has brought it all together. Ryan Leaf, just his, his will and toughness, what they've endured this year. Well, Arizona State a year ago in that great story. Folks in Pullman would put this one right there. That clock won't move fast enough for him now. They're down to 2.15. Brian's looking at that clock thinking, somebody speed that thing up. Got to be the longest two minutes in their lives. What's celebrating going on on the sideline though, yeah. Well, I tell you what, I, I mean, this has been flag day in Seattle. This is, uh, this is incredible to me. That's 17 penalties. 17. Here's a guy that's been Pac-10 coach of the year before. Got to believe it's going to be between Mike Price and Bob Toledo. 
course, I'm a big fan of Bob Toledo's, too. What a job he did down there. Perhaps even more difficult. They weren't expecting much. Lost the first two games, came back, and have not lost since, and became a power team. I mean, a huge team. Black with the run, and Bob Toledo may be under more pressure. He took a lot of heat Absolutely. in L.A. Absolutely. And so for for the season that they had and the run that they've had, you have to be happy for him. Michael Black. Tough times as a youngster. Paid his dues. Look at him. Mike Price still working. He's still working hard. Getting guys on and off the field. By the way, 170 yards there. You said at the beginning of the game you thought he would certainly go over 100 yards. Ethan, punt returner, trying to get a seam, but he brings it out to the 38. Has to lay it on the ground. And another flag, Terry. Mm. A Washington with double digits and flags, too. Not a bad one here on ABC. And there's a guy who on the next level is going to do a lot. That's an all pro arm that he has. Dorian Boos finally showing some emotion. And now Home even the Washington fans starting to give him a standing the ovation for the Air Cougars. The 10-yard penalty is enforced from the end of the kick. Then first and 10. And that's a good point. Oh, there you see him. He's got a smile now. Mike Price, well, he's soaking wet. They've already gone with the bucket over his head. Washington Husky fans appreciative of the job Mike's done, and the Washington State Cougars gave him a huge round of applause when the defense came on. I know, and that's a point as Coleman catches one out on the sideline, Timmy, but just talking to people here in Seattle this week, Washington fans, they dearly wanted to beat Washington State. It, it, it was a vindication game after losing two in a row to come back and win one for the seniors. However, all of them were really happy that it was Washington State perhaps going to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, there's a lot of state pride up here. And even though it's a rival, and certainly this is the Apple Cup, I agree with you. They, I mean, they talked about that, and they said, if we can't go, I mean, we're glad that the Cougars are. Coleman again with a catch, this time to the near side. He's had a huge day. Opened up early on with a 38-yard catch for a touchdown. Now run out of bounds at the 47. Less than a minute to go now. Still haven't seen a smile from Lee. A lot to be thankful for the season that they've had. Slips, falls at the 40-yard, 45-yard line of Washington State. Well, Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. No surprise here. Ryan Leaf of Washington State and Lester Towns from Washington. Leaf, and the best year in Pac-10 history. 22 for 38 today, 358 yards, couple of touchdowns. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements to assist those That's in financial need. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. Towns with 13 tackles on the afternoon. And three and a half tackles for loss. But Ryan Leaf, the story of this one. Well, you don't want to dampen the moment, but you have to wonder now if Ryan Leaf's going to come out. <laughs> I mean, what a talent. That guy right there doesn't want to think about it. And I'm sure he'd want the best for Ryan Leaf, but what a performance he put on today. He's big time. Brace Shaw still on his feet for the Huskies. Finally brought down at the 32. I hear Lewis Johnson's got himself a new T-shirt. Hello, huh, Lewis? Hey, guys, there's a big red case that has inauspiciously sat here the entire game. They've just broken the lock on it, and check this out. Pac-10 champions, Washington State, on the way to the Rose Bowl. I think this was a plan. How about yeah, that? Baby. Yeah. Yeah. I'll wear the T-shirt. I'm not sure about that rose in the mouth, though. A little thorny. Here's Payton with a catch. Still fighting down to the last nine seconds. And Payton makes the touchdown catch. What a grab. Jerome Payton, who had an incredible catch earlier in the game. A 32-yard reception, so you've got nine seconds left here. It's 41 to 34 after the catch by Payton. 
Boy, they don't get anything easy. Peyton, again, had to lay out completely and make a sensational grab to catch up with Ewart's pass. He's special, too. You know, he's going to play on the next level. Wes with the extra point. Well, you do have nine seconds left. You know that onside kick you were talking about? You're about to get it. Yep. So they have 11 out of 13 during Lambright's tenure here at Washington. Mike Price might be soaking wet. He's already celebrated a little bit, but now he's got to regroup. Yeah, and he's not going to relax. I mean, you and I were looking at those tapes last week. We saw an onside kick return for a touchdown, and I'm sure Mike Price doesn't want his day ruined here with the last nine seconds. Pacing continues. Leaf with the helmet back on. Maybe one more time has to come out. The day did not start real well for Ryan Leaf in this offense. The first couple of possessions, they couldn't move the football against the Washington defense. And Brock Heward was the one who put one in the end zone in Coleman, and it was 7-0. But then the turnovers started. The long, deep passes that Heward tried, they were picked off. Two long drives by the Cougars. And they've controlled things for the most part since then. And Tim Washington made the comeback, but only nine seconds left. Right Washington now. State has the sure hand guys in. Good hands team. There it is. Recovered at the 43. And that'll do it. The Washington on the recovery. That one seals it. And now, finally a different hat. Well, 1931 was the last time they went. And Mike Price is taking it back. Last time they were there, and we said yesterday, the shadow was just getting started on the radio. And, of course, there was no television. So for the first time, since you can wear a face mask on your helmet, Washington State is going to the Rose Bowl. Pack your bags in Pullman. You're going to Pasadena. Mike Price taking his alma mater. And most of these people you see on the field, along with Ryan Leaf. The most prolific passing year that anyone's ever had in the Pac-10. More important to Ryan Leaf right now, though, is sharing what all this means with all of those Cougar fans. PA announcer here at Husky Stadium just said, from all of us at the University of Washington, to those in Washington State, good luck at the Rose Bowl. So night falls on Seattle, and the Cougars are going to Pasadena. What a great story. For Tim Brandon, Lewis Johnson, I'm Terry Gannon. Hope you enjoy it with John Saunders in New York. Alongside Todd Blackledge, 67 years the last time Washington State went to a Rose Bowl. A terrific performance for them to go on the road and win yeah. at Washington. Yeah, it really was. And Ryan Leaf was clearly their leader today. Bounced back from the, the interception return for a touchdown. Showed his grit, his confidence. I think his team really fed off of that. Some good defensive play. The interceptions off of, of uh, Brock Heward, really an outstanding performance by Washington State. Total team effort. Washington State will now face Michigan. We'll talk about that in a moment. But first, let's update an upset. Number one, Florida State. Number one in the coaches' poll. But they get knocked off at the Swamp today. 
32 to 29. Yeah, Fred Taylor really was the key guy for Florida. He fumbled a couple times in the first half that kept Florida State right in the ball game, but four touchdown runs, 162 yards on the ground. Steve Spurrier alternated his quarterbacks between Noah Brindice and Doug Johnson throughout the game. A great win at home in the swamp for the Gators. And what this ensures now is because the Michigan Wolverines go into the Rose Bowl unbeaten and they'll be number one in both polls. Michigan will be playing for the national championship in the Rose Bowl. Michigan really had an outstanding season. When you look at who they beat, six teams ranked in the top 25. They went undefeated through the Big Ten schedule. The Big Ten was the best conference in college football this year. Lloyd Carr did a wonderful job keeping this team focused and hungry throughout the entire year. The Orange Bowl folks not too happy about this, but this will be sided on the West Coast this year. 20-14, to 14, Michigan unbeaten and going on. Washington State, that's the team they'll face. You just saw the final of that one. 41 to 35, and Ryan Leaf so impressive, perhaps picking up a few votes in the Heisman race. Yeah, he did a great job, and you know th this sets up a very interesting Rose Bowl matchup because you've got the best defensive team in the country in Michigan against the second most explosive offense in the country in Washington State. Ryan Leaf throwing the football around. It should be a very very exciting matchup in the Rose Bowl here in another couple weeks. Yeah, UCLA goes on a nine-game winning streak, yeah. but they do not go to the Rose Bowl in part because they won today, and that put. Washington State in with their victory. 31 to 24, UCLA got the win over USC. Now we want to go back to Seattle for more of the celebration. Let's return to Seattle and Lewis Johnson. Well, here at Washington, the fans are going nuts. Ryan, 67 years your club has not been to the Rose Bowl, but now you're on your way to Pasadena. <laughs> uh, I'm amazed, man. It's, it's been our dream since we came out here. And uh, it's so special, I'm never going to forget it, and I'll see everybody down in Pasadena. You put up huge numbers this this uh, this game today, but your offensive line was also awesome. Uh, everybody on my team deserves more of the credit. I've been getting publicity all year long, but it's really all about them. All about them, not me. Great job, thanks so much. And back to New York and John Saunders. All right, thank you. So Ryan Leaf is headed to the Rose Bowl, a terrific day today in Seattle, Washington State, first time in 67 years. They'll face the Michigan Wolverines, and this one looks like a great matchup. Yeah, it really does. Great defense, great offense. Ryan Leaf, a marquee offensive player. Charles Woodson, a marquee everything player for Michigan. Tomorrow we'll have the finals of the Chase Championships. Mary Pierce and Yana Novotna. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week here on ABC. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. Second down and four. Here's sideline, tender for Chris Jackson, caught 20, 15, 10. And he is in there, touchdown Washington. Sunday night, Monday morning for saying that the Huskies don't give any respect and Jackson gets away with a little push. Yes, he does right there, but it's still very good play by a big receiver right there. Big time play by Chris Jackson. The second touchdown catch on the afternoon by Chris Jackson. By today for the Jackson family. Brother Ray with an interception. Ryan Lindell with the extra point try. It is up. It is good. And with 3.58 to go in the third quarter, the Cougars get back up on the board. It's now the Cougars 31 and the Huskies 21. Return by Jerome Payton. Jerome is an all-around player. Looked at his all-purpose yards. On punts, kickoffs, receiving pretty deep in the end zone right here to be bringing it out. Good job, Bob. Look at Brad Hunt just kind of getting a push block right there on the cougar about the 20. Joel Payton took it a little deep, but he says, I've got to make something happen. Well, he can do that, Rick. My goodness. Nice return by Payton out to the 34. Ryan Lindell, the kicker, making the tackle. Mike Reed, the H back is in there for the Huskies. 
sideline and seven for Payton with the ball was thrown behind him. Incomplete pass at the 40. Second down and 10 for Washington. When you have guys like Brandon Moore playing that weak linebacker position, you have a tendency sometimes to do those kind of throws. He was back there in the throwing lane. We featured him in the pregame. That guy is a pretty good athlete, but. Brandon Moore got his real break in the Apple Cup a couple of years ago when Chris Hayes was hurt. Moore had to step in and played pretty well, so it really helped his confidence. It is second down and 10 for the Huskies. And off to Shaw across the 35, and not a whole lot there for Maurice. Big Leon Bender there to <laughs> help out on the stop. That was a that was a big takedown. Leon, 6'5", 299-pound senior. Interesting, they were bringing more from the outside that time. Picks up two yards. It is third down and eight. With 3.15 to go here in the third quarter. 31-21, the Cougars lead. Look for Cam Cleveland, the tight end. Made some big plays this afternoon from that spot. He's in the block. Far side, he's got a man open. First down for the Huskies at midfield. Fred Coleman. Fred Coleman with the reception. Eight of 16 yards. Eight of 16 yards to Fred Coleman. Ball is spotted at the Washington State 49 yard line. Big catch. Well, we talked about Ryan Leaf having time to throw the football. You look at the pocket right there, and you can step up, deliver the ball on the money like that. Ray Jackson giving him a lot of room. Well, let's go back to the touchdown. The offside play, the Cougars stopped for a minute. Jackson gets burnt long by Coleman. He was giving him way too much room that time, but he had memories of that touchdown catch. In motion to the near side is Coleman. Hewitt, out of the pocket, rolling to the near side, looking for a man, tosses it up for Payton, complete at the 30, and a flag is thrown. But he missed from out of bounds. You're allowed to do that if you're forced out, but I think the officials are going to say Payton ran his route out of bounds and then came back in. Officials were right there to make the call. Ewart was waiting for somebody to get open, and Payton eventually did at the 30-yard line, but he was knocked out of bounds first. I wouldn't be surprised if they waved this flag off and give him the catch, because if one of the officials says he was forced out, it'll be a good play. Ineligible receiver. The receiver went out of bounds on his own, came back in with the first attempt to touch the ball. The result was, was there was no yardage penalty, but it's a loss of down. This was second down. So a loss of down with Payton going out of bounds and then trying to come back to go after the catch. Second, second down, down and 10 at, their, <laughs> at the Washington State 49. It's just an incomplete pass. Ball of the Cougar 48. Andre Desassure into the ball game, wide to the near side. Hewitt, complete to his tight end, Cleland, at the 45-yard line. That's a gain of four. Thought the Cougar defensive line did a pretty good job that time, Sonny, of getting the thrust and getting the Huskies back and not allowing Hewitt much time to have that play develop. You know, a lot of times I look at the offensive line of the Huskies, and it's like they're sitting back on their haunches a little bit. They're not really firing out. Even in a passing situation, you still want to get your momentum going forward, and then you can retract, come back, recoil, and do your pass blocking. You just can't stand up in your stance. Otherwise, the defensive front can push you back. Another big third down play for the Huskies. It is third down and six. Motion near side. Fred Coleman. Hewitt over the middle. Payton. He's got the first down at the Washington State 32-yard line. Mr. Payton has a way of getting open and making the big play. Ray Jackson and Lamont Thompson with a tackle, but not before Payton makes the catch for the first down. Watch the throw right behind and above Brandon Moore, who was getting out in the coverage, just like you draw it up on the chalkboard, bud. Again, the Cougar defensive back, though, giving a huge cushion. Jackson was about four yards beyond the first down marker. 1.30 to go in the third quarter. Cougars with the 10 point lead at 31 to 21. And off. Over the left side and down to the 18 yard line goes Maurice Shaw. Another first down for the Huskies. Bad news for the Cougars. Looked like Lamont Thompson 
shaking up, making that tackle. Lamont Thompson down on his knees, slowly getting up. He's played very well for the Cougars. He has started the last three games for him, a freshman who has an interception this afternoon. Two of the four, actually. And Thompson is on his back being looked over by the medical staff of Washington State. It was a first down for the Huskies. But this is something the Huskies needed to do. You see big Benji Olsen pulling around, getting a key block right there, allowing Murray Shaw some room to run. Looked like maybe a little bread basket, something. Landed on the got shoulder. Tried. Yeah. He tries to wrap up Maury Shaw. He gets spun around and lands on his back as he makes the tackle on Shaw and Thompson has to come off the field, but he comes off the field on his own power, so that's good news for the Cougars. And I would imagine what Washington State has to do here is bring Lawan Gibbons in at the corner and move Jackson back to a safety. Let's see if indeed that is what has happened. Now Jackson stayed at the First corner. Down, Wayne the Stewart, the team. starting that's strong the safety, team. is out. Brian Thomas is in at the safety, a converted wide receiver. Hunt is in there and pullback back one more time for the Huskies. In front of Shaw. And outside, Washington State. Shaw to the right side. He's down around the 11 yard line. But we had somebody jump offside for the Cougars on the right side of that defensive line. Torrey Holloman with a tackle for Washington State. 55 seconds to go in the third quarter. Sonny, that's got to be Cadence now. He does. You know, Brock Hewitt has a. Five yard penalty. A really deep voice, and Bud, you know, you just change that up a little bit with the hut, hut, hut. I mean, you, you move it around. It's like Morse code, kind of. You know? Mike Price, Bill Nova, the defensive coordinator, bottom of your screen. Boy, those penalty numbers mounting. First down for the Huskies at the Washington State 13. Leon Bender jump off sides there. First and five. Three seconds ago in the third quarter. Heward looking to the near side. Incomplete. Low pass. Take that for payback. Somebody get a hand on it? Sure looked like it. Just as it went over the line. Jerome Payton had a little room to work with around the seven yard line, but he had to come back for the pass. I was looking at the other side on that play. Thought Jackson, Ray Jackson covering Freddie Coleman one on one. Had a lot of room to operate out there. It's now second down and five for the Huskies. Trying to get back on the board. Whistle. All over the place as Hewitt takes the snap from Olin Fruits. We don't want to make any mistakes down here. Five yard penalty, still second down. And they do. Second and ten. Gives them a little more room to operate in their passing schemes. Still doesn't make Coach Lambright very happy. No. Don't want to lose that momentum. Five yard penalty against the Huskies. It is second down and ten. Washington State 18 yard line. In motion to the far side goes Fred Coleman. Hewitt. The outlet pass. Down to the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. Mike Reed. He took the pass coming out of the backfield. And the Huskies get back on the board. Cougars 31 and the Huskies 27. Nick Lentz on and the extra point. Behold, the Huskies have sent Mike Reed in motion as that ace back many times. Here he's in there catching a little screen pass, which Cam Cleveland made with a big gain in the first half. Big running to finish it off. Olin Cruz with a good block on Brandon Moore. The kick by Lentz is up. It is good. It is now the Cougars 31 and Washington. 28, nine plays, covered 66 yards, 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. Cougars 31, the Huskies 28.
It's a three-point ball game. Cougars lead the Huskies 31 to 28, 15 seconds to go here in the third quarter. A 17-yard touchdown pass, a little screen pass from Hewitt to Mike Reed. Flag on the kick. Taking it at the seven-yard line. Yard line. Huskies were offside. Taylor takes the kickoff at his own seven Diane Taylor line. on the return of about five, five yards. Down. But a flag is down in the 40, and that's offsides against the Cougars. Or excuse me, against the Huskies. As Taylor makes the return for the Cougars. Two seconds left to go in the third quarter. Well, it boils down to the final 15 minutes, and Sonny, that's where the pride comes into play. Cougars have a little advantage over their opponents, 87-81 in the fourth quarter. The Dogs a 55-54 advantage in the fourth quarter. We knew it'd be tight like this. Everybody, at least around Seattle, knew it'd be a, a game within three points or at least near 30 points. And uh, so far, we're right where they said. Right there at 31 to 28 with a full quarter left to go after we wrap up the third here with only two ticks on the clock remaining. A heck of an Apple Cup game this afternoon here at Husky Stadium. Two penalties on the Huskies now. That's why there's a decision here. There's a personal foul at the end of the play, and the Cougars just might take that and take the football at the 33 rather than having the Huskies re-kick. On the kickoff, illegal formation on the kicking team is declined. So the illegal After formation the play, is declined. Dead ball, personal foul on the kicking team. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First and 10, Washington State. And the personal foul against the Huskies. Now the return by Nyan Taylor, the frustra frustration on the face of head coach Jim Lambright. With all the penalties this afternoon, really on both sides. It has not been a game that has been real pretty. But then again, a lot of times rivalry games are. Absolutely. It's, everybody's going crazy down there in the field. Looks like they're going to put the football at the 34-yard line. 31 to 28, the Cougars lead. One play left in quarter number three. Apple Cup 97 winding down. Chris Jackson out wide to the near side. Michael Black, the lone setback. Hand off on the reverse to Sean Tins. Looking to turn the corner. He's down around the 37 or 38-yard line. And Who else? that is the end of the third quarter play. That's the end of the third quarter. We're getting ready for the final period here in the Apple Cup for 1997. Our score, the Cougars 31, the Huskies 28. This afternoon here on the banks of Lake Washington. Well, last two years it's been wild to the finish, and the Cougars hoping that they can take a bite out of that apple and sniff the rose when it's all over. 15 minutes. That'll seem like Ooh, an eternity for coaches yeah. and players. It's going to be fun to watch for hey, us up here in the booth. Rick Riz on a six killer, but name it. We just win in the extra innings. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. This is exciting. I'm glad to be here. Players, this is what it's all about for the players to play in this game, to meet in the Apple Cup game for these two schools. Well, Sonny, you'll probably agree with this. As hard as they hit, as much as they talk during the game afterwards, it's High fives and hugs. Yes, you got it. And it's fun all week long leading up to the ball game. Here we go. It is second down and six for the Cougars at their own 37th lead by sideline. Open man across the 45, down across the 50. And that is Chris Jackson one more time. Chris Jackson with two touchdown passes. Mel Miller with a tackle. Another first down for the Cougars in the Husky territory at the Washington 48-yard line. You look at all the receivers the Cougars do have, Chris Jackson seems to be the most impressive to me. He's big, he's fast. Even though he's been in the coach's doghouse, he's been real impressive today. He's in the real doghouse and having fun. This is the original doghouse. Michael Black, 35, near sideline. A lot of room, 15, knocked out of bounds around the 10. Michael Black with the long run for the Cougars. Only one man was in the way of a Cougar touchdown. Nigel Burton knocks him out of bounds around the 10. What a day for Michael Black. 
Nice quick hitter up the middle. Excellent job by the line, bud. You've probably seen this play many times this year. A little quick draw. Black now 24 carries, 125 yards, over 2,000 yards in his Cougar career. Not bad for a guy who's only been in the program for two years. Yeah, a couple of years at a junior college in West Los Angeles, coming up to the Cougars, getting a chance by head coach Mike Price, and he made the best of it. Give this guy a lot of credit. Leap tosses it up, flag is thrown, the ball sails in and out of the end zone. You're going to get a late personal foul called on Ryan McShane, too. Jason Chorak with the rush, and McShane gave him a shove from behind after the whistles had blown. Get a flag of the 10, where Jackson the tried snap, to get free. Ball start on the offense, five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, they threw the second flag, and I thought they threw it after McShane had given Chorak the little shove in the five back. The Chorak did a little gymnastics routine, and <laughs> I thought the officials were giving him a 10 on it by throwing the flag, but apparently they just picked that one up. Ball goes back to the 15-yard line, first and 15 for the Cougars. Two to the left, two to the right, black to the backfield. Long snap count, Leaf drops back. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Jerry Jensen got a hand on it, deflected the pass that was intended for Sean McWashington down around the goal line. Pretty good disguise on that play by the Huskies. You had Jerry Jensen out there with the slot back. Looked like he was going to be one-on-one -on -one in coverage, and at the last minute, a Husky DB drops off in coverage. And Jerry just getting a little Boom. swipe right there. Got a hand on the ball and knocked it away. It is now second down and 15. 14 minutes to go here in the Apple Cup for 1997. Outstanding ball game. Cougars lead at 31 to 28. Brown trying to make some noise here at a packed house at Husky Stadium. 74,000 plus. Lead over the middle. Almost intercepted again by Tony Barrett. She breaks up the play. Not around the three-yard line. It was intended for Kevin McKenzie, and Tony Parrish is right there. But he did have time again, bud, to throw the football. Yeah. Might not have made the right decision that time. One of the few times you can say that. Were you looking on the, on the left side of the uh, field? It looked like the receiver was open on the near side, on the right side of the screen. But he had his mind made up where he was going with that football. With four and five guys to look at, he's, he's got to have some time from that offensive line, a lot of reading to do. Trying to get it to McKenzie. It is third down and 15. The rush is on from the Huskies. Leap. Interference. Flag is thrown at the three-yard line. Interference on Mel Miller intended for Chris Jackson. No question about that. Yeah, Miller made his break too soon. Trying to climb up his back. I think he owed that really to a bad throw by Ryan Leaf. Leave trying to get the ball to Chris Jackson. Mel Miller covering on the play. Pass interference on the defense. The spot foul. First and ten. First and goal. And the spot of the foul. First and goal for the Cougars at the Washington three-yard line. Let's watch the throw Pass here. Penalty against the Huskies is an automatic first down. Threw it behind him a little. Mel Miller really, that's unfortunate in a way, bud. Yeah, Jackson actually slipped. And by slipping, it slowed both of them down. And Miller couldn't avoid the contact. Yeah, it's... Ball was thrown behind him. Jackson stopped. Miller kept going. It's too late now. <laughs> first and goal. Break for the Cougars. Yeah, first and goal at the three. Leap. Over the middle. Incomplete. Love Jefferson had a hand on it. Jumped the ball and lost it. Second and goal. Broken up by Jabari Issa. Yeah, it looked like yeah. Jabari Issa had an opportunity. Got his big paw up there. One of the plays the Cougars like to run in this situation is a quarterback draw. Leaf will take a step or two back and Next then goal, step Cougars forward. As you see, yet another three. record that Ryan Leaf has with 330 yards passing the third best in this Apple Cup. Wow. 
He's also set a Pac-10 single-season total offense record today. Michael Black just inserted into the ball game, carries down to about the one-yard line. A gain of two yards on the carry by Black. Cougars lead 31 to 28 with 13 46 to go in the game. Cougars have been very good in the red zone this season. And very tough for the one. Wouldn't be surprised to see Orion Leaf sneak here. We've also seen Michael Black go over the top and just jump high. Third and goal to goal. Ryan Leaf keeps it himself. And let's see if he's in there. Touchdown, Washington State. Now the signal from the referees. Ryan Leaf gets in for the score. And the Cougars put six more on the board. Ryan Leaf makes it himself. It appeared to me at first on this sneak that he was going to be a little short of yeah. the goal line. Right there, he fumbled the ball. Well, it looked to me like he did not get in on that play. The ball has to break the plane in your possession, and he lost it as he reached out. Fumble on the play before the player went into the end zone. However, the offensive player who fumbled it recovered in the end zone. It's only third down, therefore it is a touchdown. So Ryan Leaf recovers his own fumble for the touchdown. And the Cougars now lead 37 to 28. But I thought he recovered it still in the field of play. It looked like the ball was behind the line. His body was forward. Look here. I bet in the pile he nudged the ball forward. There he is. Break. Right. See, then he went like that. Either way, it's a touchdown. The kick by Ryan Lindell is good. And the Cougars now lead 38 to 28. Back out to a 10-point advantage with 13-14 left to go. 13 minutes, 14 seconds left in the game. Once again, our score, the Cougars 38, the Huskies 28. Six left to go in this Apple Cup. The Cougars lead by 10, 38-28. Second down and eight for Washington State at the Washington 15-yard line. Leaf hands it off to Black again. Breaks free on the near side, and he's taken down around the 12-yard line by Farms and Jensen. A gain of three yards on the carry. I want to correct something I said earlier. I said that UCLA lost this afternoon. They won today over USC, so that paves the way for the Cougars, if the Cougars win this ball game, they go to the Rose Bowl for the first time in 67 years. So UCLA with a win today. And if the Cougars end up winning this ball game, four and a half minutes left to play. It's been a long year, long last three weeks, I should say, for the Huskies. But what a year for that man and his team, Mike Price and the Cougars. It is third down and five is incomplete intended for Chris Jackson at the seven yard line. Intended for Chris Jackson. That'll make it fourth down and five and Ryan Lindell will come in for the field goal try. You know, it's nice to know in this game though that no matter what happens, either both teams are going to a bowl game. Mm -hmm. The one 67 years, I mean, my gosh, it uh, gives a lot of credit Long to time. the Northwest. Anytime you can have a Northwest school go, particularly from the state of Washington over USC or UCLA. It's a great feat. Ball will be spotted at the 19-yard line. Lindell boots it up, and it is good. Ryan Lindell with a 29-yard field goal. Three more for the Cougars with 4-12 to go. It's now the Cougars, 41, and the Huskies, 28. We'll be back right after this timeout. In 67 years, they lead this one 41 to 28 with just over four minutes left to play. But anything can happen if you're a Husky fan. You know that your club can turn around and score quickly twice. If you're a Cougar fan, you've got to be very pleased with the way that your team has played all day long. Jarzink and Payton, the deep end for the Huskies, back around their own five yard line. Lindell gets the kick away, high and over end kick, Payton in his own end zone, he's going to bring it out, goes to the far side, 
five, and he's taken down at the eight-yard line. Payton trying to make something happen, hoping for the long return, but the great coverage this time around by the Cougars. He looked down at the Cougar sideline right now, and yeah, Wazoo's going bowling, and it looks like perhaps Rose bowling. He looked down on the Cougar sideline, a number of the redshirt players standing watching with roses in hand. Here's a look at the game summary. Ryan Leaf, 358 yards, a new Apple Cup record. Brock Heard, 181 yards passing, four interceptions. Total yards, 504 for Washington State. And a lot of points off the turnovers by the Huskies. Deep downfield near sideline. Deaths is sure, but a flag is thrown. We're going to have inf interference against Washington State. Yeah, you're right, bud. You know, it's a great feeling to sit up here and see your team with roses in their hand. And it's, uh, it's a great honor to the athletes, the coaching staff, and everybody involved with the school. Well, it's been great to see the, the Huskies go to the Rose Bowl as many times as they have and do as well as they have. Pass interference on the defense. 15 yard penalties and the spot of the foul, automatic first down. But, but after 67 years, you think, hey, it's our turn. And that's what the Cougars are saying right now. Well, I think there's a lot of people that uh, have put a lot of effort into the Cougar program. Not with the greatest results at times, but as Mike Price said earlier in this week, if his team manages to get to the Rose Bowl, it'll be because of the efforts of a lot of people, not just the ones in uniform and coaches today. First yep. and 10 for the Huskies at their own 24. I think that's great. And the other side of it also, too, bud, is the, the sanction thing that Coach Lambright mm -hmm. talked about. Now that's over with. That's yeah. been five years. That's done. That's toast. We don't need to talk about it anymore. They get the full complement of scholarships again. And, and they've got the makings of a very good team for next season. Well, and you feel sorry for these seniors becoming the first senior class not to go to the Rose Bowl from the University of Washington in quite some time. But you have to give them credit for their stick to itiveness through the probationary period and helping this program stay on solid footing. Look what's happened Absolutely. to Oklahoma. It is still one of the best football programs in the country. Well, the timer please set the clock at 3.55. We're going to put five more seconds on the clock. We have 3.50 on the clock. They are going to put five more seconds on to make it 3.55 left to go in the ball game. The Huskies have to score. They have to score in a hurry. It's 41 to 28, Cougars lead. With just under four minutes left to go in the game. At their own 23. Think any of the Cougar fans here realize it's raining? No, <laughs> no. No, they're glowing down there. Heward, quick outlet pass, Fred Coleman, but it's low, incomplete. Coleman trying to scoop it up off the turf. Gleason on the coverage for the Cougars. Although Gleason really didn't have anything to do with that play not working. He's had a nice game defensively for Washington State. They continue to win this ball game, but they should take those fans, Cougar fans that come to every home game and give them first priority on any seat at the Rose Bowl. Here we're on second down. Now the pass is complete to Coleman. Out to the 30-35, across the 40, 50, 40, and knocked out of bounds at the Washington State. 43-yard line. Exact same play. They come right back to it. And this time it works very well. Lamont Thompson finally shoves Coleman out of bounds. Great play by Fred Coleman. They'll say he stepped out back at the 40. Well, there's no quit on the seniors of the Husky team right there. Fred Coleman doing a job, and you talked about Levy and his kid blocking right there. Jerome Payson with a big block to help his teammate and senior buddy Fred Coleman make a big game. Four catches for Fred Coleman this afternoon for 100 yards. One of the 17 seniors making their final appearance for the Huskies here at Husky Stadium. On first down, Heward. Down over the middle, throw Payton up in the air, and it is going to be intercepted by Washington State. Lamar Thompson again, his third. Payton went up in the air, he had it, bobbled it, but Thompson comes down. Well, I want to know who, what coach made a decision not to start Lamont Thompson earlier in the year. That's a good interception right here. Two guys vying for the football. 
just an outstanding effort by Thompson to get the interception. Payton trying to bring that pass back down, but off his hand, and Thompson gets it. Brock knows he had pressure to get rid of the football again. Good job by the Cougs to get pressure on Brock Stewart, and he just had a little bit too much juice on the ball. First and 10 for the Cougars at their own 10-yard line. Cougars just need to make sure they have two hands on the football the entire time. Now, Michael Black running one-handed on it. There are some pretty happy Cougar fans. Gain of five. It'll be second down and 10. You bet. Lead up some time on the clock. 321 left to go in the football game. 41-28, the Cougars lead. And we've got time out on the field by Washington. The Cougars with the ball at their own 15. The Cougars lead it. 41 to 28. We'll be back right after this. Time out. With the 108 left to go in the game. Cougars lead 41 to 28. Pass is complete. And out of bounds at the 30-yard line goes Fred Coleman. So he's over 100 yards for the afternoon with his catches from Brock Heward. Mike Price, look at that. Jumping into the arms of receiver Chris Jackson. There goes the Gatorade on top of Price. Hugging another one of his players. Mike Price and the Cougars will celebrate tonight. Passes off. Complete near side. Coleman one more time. And Fred has run out of bounds at the 46-yard line. A first down for the Huskies. Eight of 16 yards. 57 seconds left to play. The Washington State Cougars will be going to the Rose Bowl for the first time in 67 years. What a season for Washington State. Quick pass. Ness is sure with the reception. 45 slips and falls down. Tough to keep your foot on the ground. That's days. true. And, and young Dessie sure should remember to try and get out of bounds. Yeah. Hey, you know, this game, Sonny, proves that the Cougars don't have to have snow to beat the Huskies. That's always a fallacy. 35 seconds left to play. Second down and one. Brock Hewitt. Far sideline. It is incomplete. It almost picked That's off again. Intended for Coleman. Clock stops with 26 seconds left. Good afternoon for a young Mr. Leaf. Will he play in only one more game in a Cougar uniform? Will he enter the NFL draft? If he does, he certainly will be one of the top picks. Third down and a yard for the Huskies. First down. Marie Shaw down to the Washington State 32 yard line gets out of bounds to stop the clock 18 seconds left. Sonny, it's been a long time since the Huskies have ended the season with three straight losses, or lost three straight for that matter. I think 1989. It's been a while. It's not the way you like to finish your November, but uh, yeah, it's time to regroup. And Rick Dixon, man. the Cougar Athletic Director, celebrating his coach. Downfield into the end zone, complete draw, Payton, touchdown. Brock Hewer, touchdown pass to Payton. A 45-yard strike, Hewer to Payton with nine seconds left to play. 41-34, Cougars lead. And what a catch by Payton, no quit in this club, and especially that guy, number 24. He and made the fake seven. like he was going to spike the ball to stop the clock and throwing it downfield to Payton. Yeah, it was like that. Everybody else decided to stop playing. <laughs> it was kind of weird. <laughs> nice catch by Jerome for the touchdown. Dick Lentz on for the extra point try. Snap back. The kick is up. And it is good. Well, that's a little drama now. The Huskies are certainly going to onside kick. 41-35. The Cougars lead with nine seconds left to go. Don't go away. We'll be back right after this timeout. Remember, it's making... Huskies 35, only nine seconds left to play. So you know the Huskies will try the onside kick to try to get it back. They've been successful with the onside kick throughout the year. Cougars have the hands team on. They will 
hold on to this football with their lives. Well, the only problem, Sonny, only nine seconds yeah, left. Not much time. Clock starts when it's kicked. And, and it's Cougars be got it. Fittingly, Sean McWashington out of Seattle makes the recovery. The Cougars will have to take a knee. And it'll be a knee that'll take them to the Rose Bowl. This game is over. Eight seconds are left, but Ryan Leaf will just take the snap from center, go down on one knee, run out the clock. And the Cougars will come away with the biggest victory in their history in the last 67 years. Mike Price will win his first game on the road in November since he took over as head coach of Washington State. So the Cougars will come away with an Apple Cup victory here in 1997 that will propel them into the Rose Bowl January the 1st. There's the roar from the crowd. They just announced that UCLA has won, and the Cougars have won, and Washington State's going to the Rose Bowl. Ryan Lee takes the knee. It is over. The Cougars win it, and they're on to the Rose Bowl January the 1st. Cougar fans, the players, the coaches celebrate on the field here at Husky Stadium. The Cougars win it this afternoon. A final score of 41 to 35. The Cougars are going to the Rose Bowl for the first time in 67 years. It's official. The Cougars are going to the Rose Bowl. Nobody is happier than that guy right there. Cougar head coach Mike Price, final score. Cougars 41, the Huskies 35. All on Fox Sports Northwest was brought to you by Magnolia High Five, the nation's most award-winning consumer electronics dealer. By your Northwest Ford dealers, home of the top 10 sellers in America, again. And by Smart Wireless. Take it from Smartman. Smart Wireless has all the analog and digital wireless options you need. Call 1-800-898-SMART. And welcome back to Husky Stadium where the Cougar Nation is celebrating today because the Cougars are going to the Rose Bowl. Washington State with an exciting 41 to 35 win over the Huskies here at a packed house in Husky Stadium. Hi again everybody, Rick Riz along with Sonny Sixkiller and Bud Namick and what a ball game fellas this afternoon. Give this Cougar football team and the coaching staff a lot of credit. A lot of firsts for this Cougar team as we've been talking about. Now another first, they take on number one Michigan in the Rose Bowl. What a fun matchup, Brian Leaf and Charles yeah. Woodson. And they get there for the first time in 67 years, Sonny. I'll tell you, it's, it was a great ball game. I tell you, a lot of people in the stands, Husky or Cougar, have to admire Ryan Lee's performance today. The guy really shown. And the right. Huskies with a lot of class today. The PA announcement at the end of the game, wishing the Cougars best of luck in the Rose Bowl. That's so the be. Cougars move on to the Rose Bowl on January the 1st. Here's a look at today's Magnolia High Five moment. And it's the touchdown catch by Chris Jackson, a 57-yard touchdown catch from Ryan Leaf to give the Cougars a 14-7 lead. Beautiful effort by Jackson to break a couple of tackles, get into the end zone, and help Ryan Leaf get a Pac-10 single-season touchdown record, and the Cougars rewriting the Pac-10 offensive record book today. Our Magnolia moment play of the game. So congratulations to Washington State. Once again, the final score from Husky Stadium, it's the Cougars 41 and the Huskies 35. For Sonny Sixkiller and Bud Navick, I'm saying so long, everybody, here on Fox Sports Northwest.